take you through four stages of my growth and what happened to me, okay? And this would be stage number one, okay? And I'll put it up here. And they all lasted, the first three lasted about 90 days. It's very interesting how that 90-day segment has such an important role in our, in our business. And this started here when I first got started. My first set here was 90 days. And this was what I call infatuation. I don't know if you can understand my writing, but I'll do the best I can. It's infatuation, where we're just in love with everything. Everything's perfect. It's just like getting a new relationship started. Okay, everything's perfect. You see no faults, okay? Everything just goes along. You're forgiving of everything. Everything is just great, great, great. Everything's perfect, right? For about that first 90 days. And in that 90-day period for me, here's what happened. Now you gotta also remember this, I gotta backtrack for those of you who have not heard the story, but um, I wasn't a business person, okay? I was not an educated person. Um, I was, back then, I was a long-haired hippie construction worker, and uh, I never finished formal schooling at all. I just, I didn't, I had to quit school and get to go to work in construction to make money, okay? And, uh, and so at six, the age of 16, that's when you could quit school if you wanted to in America. And uh, when I was 16, I quit and I went to work in construction work. And, um, and, and I liked construction work, I enjoyed it. I really did like it and I was good at it. And I, and I really liked it. And I got to work with my, my dad and my brothers and my cousins and got to work with my friends. We had you know, a little team that we all worked together and it was fun. And I never thought about it doing anything other than construction work. I didn't, my education didn't say that I could. My environment never told me that I could do anything more. We didn't have opportunities running around back then. This is the 60s in America, okay? There wasn't opportunities the way there are everywhere today. And the opportunities that you guys have here is multiplied by 10 of what it was like back in the 60s in America. There was no opportunities. You had to be educated, you had to have money, and you had to have contacts to even get into any kind of business. To get into a business was a big deal, okay? And, and, it, and it wasn't the, the average person to do it. For somebody like me, I didn't have a chance. And so what happened? How did that transition take place, okay? I got invited down to a meeting back in the 60s. And um, I, I went to this meeting for two reasons. Um, I never thought at all it was going to be something that would be there for me. It never, never occurred to me. But I had never been to a business meeting in my life, okay? And that was a kind of an exciting thing to go to. What do they do? They smoke cigars? I don't know what they do there. You know, they sit around and I don't know what they do. And the second thing was, is I'd never been to a hotel before. And this meeting was going to be held at the Hyatt Hotel. And, and I'd never been to a hotel at all. And I thought, wow. And, and I used to drive by this Hyatt Hotel. Was, I never will forget, it was right on the, on the 101 freeway there in, in First Street, it was kind of like a triangle there. And I used to drive by all the time when we doing construction work. And you know how they have these big pillars, these big pork where you drive your car underneath, you got them everywhere here. There weren't too many of them back there in the 60s. That hotel had that pork where you drove your car underneath, and they came out and opened your doors. And I used to see that when I do construction work. Oh, that's really something. Wouldn't it be cool to drive up there and have them open the door and have this hippie walk out? You know what I mean? Wouldn't that be something? And I, I, I used to think about that all the time. And then when I got invited to that meeting, and it was a business meeting, and it was going to be held at the Hyatt Hotel, I'm thinking, wow, wow, I can go there and go to that hotel. And, and, and it was, that's what was my motivation. That was my incentive for going to that meeting that night. Never occurred to me that I would like it. I never thought about getting rich. Uh, the most money that I'd ever made in a year of my life back then was $6,700, which is not a lot of money, okay? And about the most that I could think of was $25,000 a year, man. 20, how could you spend $25,000 a year and so much money? I couldn't even begin to comprehend that. And so I went there that night as an experience. I didn't go there looking for opportunity. I didn't go there 
thinking that maybe I could get into business. None of that stuff. I went there because it was going to be an experience of life. But let me tell you what happened to me when I got there. I was very fortunate because Bobby DePew, Robert DePew, I call Bobby as I call him, um, was given a meeting that night. And Bobby was one of the original founders of network marketing. I call him the architect of network marketing. Because all the things that I teach you and all the things that have come from my teaching and so much of what happens in the network marketing world has come from the teaching that Bobby passed on to me that I passed on to somebody else. They didn't see the long-haired hippie construction worker with no education and no self-confidence and no self-esteem. They saw who I was connected with. And when they saw who I was connected with, that gave me credibility. That gave the opportunity credibility. Because if someone like me was trying it, then obviously they, if I could be somewhat successful at this, and if they had more education, more experience, more money, more revenue, then they could do it easier, quicker, and faster. You understand how that, that's the psychology. I did really good here that first nine years. Really good. But you know what happened? At the end of that 90 days, here came the next 90 days. Okay? And the next 90 days here, this one here is called, I don't really, I can't, I've never been able to put a name on this. But this one here is where anxiety sets in. <laughs> anxiety. And what happened was, I was doing my, and I'll point out my daily method of operation as we go through the day. But I was working here. I was talking to people here. I was bringing people to the meetings. I was signing people up. And I was dealing with people in my center of influence. But I don't care who you are, at the end of that 90 days, you're pretty much out of it. Am I right? Okay. You talk to all the people in your family, friends, relatives, co-workers, previous, but you talk to all of them, and they've already told you the yes or no. And now you're bringing less people to the meetings. Okay. You're talking to less. You're not talking to new people. And what happens is you start instead of doing your daily method of operation, your DMO, you come back over here and start working with these people that you got into business, trying to get them to do more. Now you're not doing more, but you're trying to get them to do more, okay? And so this here, this 90 day period is where I started losing my attitude, okay? A better way to describe that is I started losing my edge. The only thing that any of us have going for us is our edge, okay? That extra edge we have of attitude. That extra edge we have of confidence, that somebody like myself, with no education, no self-confidence, no self-esteem, I could tell you the color of your shoes, but I couldn't tell you the color of your eyes because I was always looking down, didn't have good vocabulary at all, okay, had none of that, those things. Bobby got me to believe that someone like me, with those limitations, could actually become anything that they wanted to become with this vehicle called network marketing. And it wasn't called network marketing back then. It wasn't even called pyramiding back then. I mean, uh, multi-level back then. It was called pyramiding back then is what they called us. And so he got me believing that with this vehicle and that if I would stay around and learn some few basic fundamental skills that I could become whatever I want to become, do whatever I want to do and influence whoever I wanted to influence. He got me believing. It was enough for me to put one foot in front of the other and try. And as I was putting one foot in front of the other, it wasn't the money that I was earning because the money was sporadic in the beginning. Um, we didn't have television the way we have today, 500 channels. There was three channels in America. And, 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 and at nighttime, at 10 o'clock at night, they went off the air, okay? And it was all black and white TV. Now, you know, when I tell that story in America, no one has. They, 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 if I'm talking to someone 30 years old, they and they, they never heard of black and white TV. Okay? They didn't know that television could go off. Like that. All of the telephones were rotary dial. You guys remember that here? He's what they do in America, right? And long distance was incredibly expensive. Even calling across town was very expensive. When I grew up, you didn't have private lines. You shared one line with four or five other 
families. Okay, and you get on the phone and someone would be talking, you'd have to hang up and wait till they got off. Did that, did that go on over here? Okay, family, uh, uh, whatever, I can't remember what, uh, party lines is what it was called. And, and so communication didn't exist. And from where I am in my hometown to El Paso, Texas, is over a thousand miles. That's like 3,000 kilometers. So what, what is it? How much is 3,000 miles? A thousand miles. Three, anyway, it's a long ways away. Okay? And, and there's nobody in the state of Texas. Not one distributor in the state of Texas. I'm it. It is literally like I was pushed out of the airplane with a brochure. There's no conference calls. There's no webinars. There's no internet. There's no upline support because upline support can't fly in there. Flying's too expensive. Only the very rich business people would ever think about getting on an airplane. Okay? I'm out there by myself in El Paso, Texas. Here, I was the long-haired hippie construction worker with no education and no self-confidence and no self-esteem. Infatuated. Here, I'm scared to death because I, it's not working. Everything's going down, okay? I don't have my confidence. I don't have my edge. But I have this learning experience with body. And as I'm getting that learning experience towards the end of this 90 days, guess what? I'm getting more confident, so I'm starting to recruit a little bit more. But my check has gone down because I wasn't adding new people in fast enough. You, you know what I'm talking about? You gotta keep adding new people in. Now I find myself here and I gotta go out, it's just like if I was to jump in an airplane from America and land in Moscow with being the only distributor in Moscow, I'm not speaking Russian, okay? With none at all, it's like those kind of things. And so I get out there, and back then, okay, the way that you, the only way that you recruited, you couldn't do it through emails or text or web pages or any of that stuff. You had to do meetings. And you had to rent a meeting hall. Back then you rented meeting halls in hotels. And there was only a few types of hotels in America then. Holiday Inn, Ramada Inn, Howard Johnson's. That probably don't mean anything to you guys here, but very small hall, uh, uh, hotel chains. And, and so you'd have to go rent a meeting room. And that was a big deal. And so when I got to El Paso, Texas, one of the things that I learned was you had to have meetings three times a week back then, okay? Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday is what we would call. Tuesday nights you have a business opportunity meeting where you explain the business to get people interested, okay? Thursday night you have a business opportunity meeting, just do the same, and then Saturday morning you do it, and then you have a training on Saturday for the, the people you brought Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday could set through the training as a second exposure so that you could get business, okay? And so we had to always have something at the end of the week to close them out, to give them a chance to see one more thing, to see if we couldn't get them interested. You guys know anything about American baseball? Okay. <laughs> this is funny. The <laughs> two heads go up. Okay. Uh, anyway, I don't know how to explain it without doing some kind of uh, 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 numbers. But if you do something over a prolonged period of time, okay, and you do it consistently, you're going to have numbers. Okay, and in any numbers that you do something, there's safety in numbers. In other words, if you have a shoe store, okay, everyone that bought, walks into your shoe store is not going to buy. Am I right about that? Yeah. You do not equate your success to who buys. You equate your success to what? How many people walk in the door? You know you got to get X because if you get 10 people to walk in the door, you might be able to get two people to buy, okay? And you don't pay attention to the two people that buy. You pay attention to what you ought to do to get 10 people to walk in the door. Does this make any sense? Okay? We're distributors. We focus on the ones that buy. So if they buy, great. If they don't buy, we go into a We go, oh, nobody's joining. Nobody's joining. The best I've ever gotten in safety in numbers is two out of 10. That's the best I've ever gotten to this day. If I talk to 10 people about coming to my business opportunity meeting, I'll get two to show up. If I get 10 to show up, I'll get two to join. If I get 10 to join, I'll get two to get limited engaged. When I get 10 to get limited engaged, I'll get two to do fully engaged. 
That's been my best that I've ever got. Now, everyone, then what does that mean? If I got to I gotta invite 10 people to get two to show up, because I'm not dealing with center of influence. I gotta invite 10 to get two to show up. Okay? When I get 10, 10 to show up, I'm gonna get two to get started. Does everyone that gets started with you today move ahead? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. We think that they, if they don't, no, the business is not working. I'm not good enough. Oh, this and all that, right? You go through all these crazy psychological, emotional things. I got to invite 10 to get two to show up. I got to get 10 to show up to get two to join. I got to get 10 to join to get two to get somewhat engaged. We get faked out when we get someone in, in signed up. And, we think, and they get engaged, and we think we got somebody, and then two weeks later, we can't find them. You know what I'm, what I'm talking about? Okay, I got to get 10 to get limited engaged to get two that will get fully engaged. And when I get 10 that are fully engaged, I got me two presence team members. Well, it works, okay? And it's a process. I got to get talk to 10 to get two to show. I got to get 10 to show to get two to join. I got to get 10 to join to get two limited engaged. When I get 10 that's limited engaged, I got two that's fully engaged. When I get 10 that's fully engaged, I got two presence team members. Here, the, you get better. When you're here, you may be able to talk to 10 to get five to show. Okay, and you might get six to sign up out of the five to show because of, you know, they get somebody that night when they go home. Here, that, that law of average safety number law of average doesn't apply. It starts to apply over here. But when you live it, that's when you when you go through it. Okay? So do you understand safety and number one damage? Well, how I had to work with that was real simple. Bobby taught a 10 penny method. What would a penny be over here? What would that what would be the equation? Coins. A coin. A coin. Penny just one cent, okay? And I have to put 10 coins in this pocket. And, and he told me it was impossible. That's what I got when I'm listening to these tapes at night. It's impossible, it's impossible for me to work today from eight to five, eight to four, and not have moved 10 pennies and have someone at that meeting that night. He said it's impossible. Now, what, how'd I move a penny? I couldn't, I had to go 10 pennies here. I couldn't come home tied 10 pennies over here, okay? And I would have somebody at the meeting that night. I'm in El Paso not knowing anybody, so that's what I got to do. Ads aren't working for me, and I got to go afterwards. I was retired out of Herbalife. Uh, I retired out of Herbalife in 1993. And, um, and then what had happened is I didn't do anything for a couple of years. And in that process of that couple of years, I decided that I wanted to uh, do the stuff that I'm doing today. And Carolyn Tarr was my good friend, and Vicki Tarr was my good friend. And Carolyn came to Europe to find a European company that that I wouldn't be selling do what I did for her, but that I would teach the process, the sales and the process, what I'm teaching you guys now. And she found Roth. And Roth had a very small company at that point, but he believed that he needed uh, the mentorship and, and, and that sort of thing. And so we put a, a deal together there in that first two years of his company, the two, first three years of his company, what I'm doing now, I did then. Okay. And then what happened to me after that, quite frankly, is I got chronic fatigue and I was in bed for five years. I was real sick for five years. And it took a long time to get back on my feet. And then uh, what happened then was uh, uh, I met Taylor, my future wife-to-be, and she, I was in California and she was in Texas. And then I moved to Texas and took us a couple of years of figuring out that we wanted to get married. We got married, three stepdaughters, started putting all that together, da 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 da, da. And then, you know, a few year, a couple of years ago, I said, I want to get back and get real active. My second question is, now comparing Herbalife and BMI, which one you think is best compared to this? Compared to Herbalife and compared to PM, which one looks best? Well, you know, the only way I can answer that question for you is if you were in Herbalife, that looks the best. If you're in PM, that looks the best. <laughs> You gotta realize that PM, even though I haven't been here for about 15 years, started with this philosophy and culture and environment that I'm sharing with you, it started that way. That's the way Herbalife started. That's the way Herbalife continued on. It's losing that part of it. 
In the last 15 years, they're losing, slowly but surely losing. You get a degree off at a time in 180 days, you're going over here. They're, they're still a very phenomenal company, very phenomenal everything. I mean, that teaching goes deep, okay? Because it develops leadership. And I don't know if I've answered what you were asking, okay? But I appreciate you asking and talking about it. Thank you. Okay, right here. Uh, I, can, I, uh, I can hear lots of questions about the product and company, and uh, what I heard from your conversation, at the end of the third 90 days, you were at the same company doing the same product. So what changed at the end of the, 13th, uh, the 90 days? Here's the heart of the whole thing. What I was doing here, and what I was doing here, and what I was doing here, same product, same compensation bond, same sponsor, same everything, there's no difference. What happened here, was I started learning these things that I'm sharing with you today, okay? I learned those things. I lived it over here. It became a part of me. And, and I know that it doesn't matter what's going on, I can, I can build my business because I'm self-responsible, self-determined, self-motivated, self-functioning. I know what to do. I know what to do. And I learned it as a, as a basically I was so a long-haired hippie back then, okay? But that's what I learned how to do. And, and you can't learn this from the classroom. You can't learn it from any coming here. You can't learn it from the tapes. You can't learn it from my web. You can't learn it there, okay? You can be taught, but you gotta live it. You gotta live it. When you live this, that's when you know the difference. And, and, and so, but the difference was me. That's what it was. The difference is always you. What did we start with? Self-responsibility, that's you. Self-determination, that's you. Self-motivation, that's you. Self-functional, that's you. It's not your sponsor, okay? It's not PM, it's not the local office, it's you. And what you do, you want this to be successful? Be the only one, okay? You guys, this is fresh, this is new. A lot of this right now is in, even though it's not a 90 day period, but you, the, the country, this part of the world is in the infatuation stage right now, okay? You're, you know, when you're going to find out if you're going to become great or not, is what you, if you're going to learn this here now, you guys are committed to this. Roth is coming here. We're going to talk about that. He's coming in February. We're going to talk about that. What you guys do between now and then. We got to get you guys ready for the grand opening. The grand opening, you're not ready. We don't have enough leadership, enough strength of people that have gone through this and this to have a grand opening. It's not about numbers of people. It's not about sales volume. It's about the leadership. It's how many people that have gone through this process that have that basic fundamental self-responsibility skill set. We gotta get you ready for the grand opening. Okay, we gotta get you ready. And it's leadership. It's leadership. So I don't I think I answered what you were asked for. Okay. I really appreciate you guys asking questions. Good evening, Mr. Larry. I'm from Calcutta, India. Arshad. You whatever you shared, this is really amazing. But I know one thing in our life, if we don't have any passion towards anything, we can't get success. Now I'm crazy for your product, for your PMI company. No doubt it's a fantastic platform. I want to know only, only in one line from you because you give me some special tips. When I go back to India, I can make to my people crazy. What is the unique sell point? Unique sell point, USP of PMI. When I am going to share with my people passion. How I can create passion about PMI? Thank you. Okay, I'll that. Good luck. Okay, one more. No, I will. Okay, but let me. I can handle that for you, Seth. So, how to get the passion? Okay, you want to know how to get the passion? How do you get the passion with your wife? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you want to do, you want to love, you want to be, you want to do, you want to experience. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I want to do this. I, I want to do this. How do you get the passion with anything is very difficult. You either, you either want it or you don't want it. You want to, you're going to do it or you're not going to do it. You either have passion for cooking or you don't. Some people have passion for cooking. Some people have passion for eating. Okay? It's all different. How do you get that passion? So responsibility you self-determination you self-responsibility you if I could show you a way to someone I didn't know it was very hard for me in this time period very tough when I got over here I had to do it 
I had to do it. And I had to talk to people I didn't know. And I had to do it until I got Mark and Charlotte, who was number 53, to join me. Then, the first day that they got started, I had to make a list of names of people that they thought might be interested in hearing, not about the business, but people that might be interested in hearing about uh, 25,000, 80,000, 200,000, that idea, okay? That's, they made a list of names. And usually I found that the first three people they put down are the ones I want to talk to, you know what I mean? They didn't have to think. The first three they got right away. And generally those three are the ones that they feel like that would respond the most positive to it. Not that would do it, but the, the first ones that they put down are the ones, they're not going to put down the ones that they think Uncle Harry, who's not going to, he's cynical to everything, they're not going to put him down first. And so what happened to me, the first day that they got started, at my next day, I had to move 10 pennies. Three of them with Shark and, uh, Shark, Mark and Charlotte's people from the list. And seven of them were from pennies to be talking to people I didn't know. That's what happened. Now, I started signing some of their people. We started getting, a, after a few days, we started getting a couple of people of theirs in, and I had them make up the list of names. And it's their contacts, my presentation. And what I'm doing now is I'm moving pennies. I remember the first day that I only had to move five pennies because I talked to five people that was on the center of the list of names over here, okay? I don't remember if I ever, I don't remember, I, so that means it probably didn't happen. Uh, I never got to the fact that I never moved some pennies. I was, I was working through center of influence and moving some pennies. Now, if I don't have a list of names from people, their contacts, my presentation, then I gotta move pennies. The only reason I move pennies is what? There's only one reason I move pennies, to get a list of names, okay? Because I get pennies to get someone to start it, so I get my 10 people to get two to start, then I got a list of names. And I work those list of names and move pennies, and so I can get more list of names, and, and if I got, if I ever have 10 people that I talk to off a list of names, I don't have to move any pennies that day. Are you with me? Okay. But I got, it's, if it's five pennies for you, if it's two pennies for you, three pennies for you, whatever it is, that's what I've got to do every day, and I'm going to do it. If I have no list of names, I'm going to do it here. What is easier, list of names or pennies? List of names are easy. There's some kind of relationship there with somebody. So it's easier for me to do list of names than it is pennies. My odds don't change, okay? My percentages don't go up. It still saves me a number of law of average. It's not going to change much, but it's easier, okay? And it's faster, a little bit faster. That's all it is. That's all it takes. I will get faster. 10 people will come to the meeting than I would off of this than I would off of my, my pennies, okay? I'll get 10 people faster. I'll get two people a meeting faster here than with pennies. Now, the results aren't any different. I still only get about two out of 10, but it's faster. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yes. So I don't work with someone, I cannot work with someone, unless I have a list of names. If they don't provide me with a list of names, there's nothing I can do. There's not much I can do. What can I do, okay? Because the business boils down to these concepts here, these principles, these are not concepts, this is principle. And it's called tell, show, try, do. Okay? What we're doing here today is telling you. Telling you. Now, if I was your sponsor, okay, I would go out here and I would tell you that this is what we're going to do. But then I would show you what we were going to do. I'm not interested in showing you about anything except if I'm building a business. You've got to understand, if I'm selling products, then I'm going to show you how to mix them. Okay? And I like what Rudy says. Rudy doesn't sell products, he sells solutions. Do you have energy? If not, you need, here's a solution. Do you need to sleep? Here's a solution. Okay? You don't need to teach them much about the product other than honestly how to stir it. Okay, uh, I like what he said too, Stevie Wonder. You know, the musician is blind, and Stevie Wonder can do this. Why? Because the packets, the sachets are different weights and different sizes, and so you can, all you gotta know is which one to mix, okay? And, and anybody can do this. So there's not a lot of showing in the products. There's a lot of showing in the products if you wanna be a doctor, okay? And there's a lot of showing in the product if you wanna get the clinicals out, there's a lot of showing in the product. If you want to tell them how valuable the patents are, that'll work. All of that stuff works. The problem is it won't duplicate, okay? If, if you know a lot about the products, 
Okay? In America, for example, there's a lot of nutritionists. On every corner, there's nutritionists and there's experts everywhere. They can sell the product. I think you said you sell about twenty five hundred out of your a month out of your out of your office, your doctor's office. No. About two thousand. Private. But yeah, out of his private practice, he sells about two thousand. Now he's a doctor. Okay. Now he's got to go into some different things about the products than you and I would. He can't say I don't know about that. You understand? He can't say that. He's got to go into a little bit more technical things, but he's got another challenge. It's easier for him to sell the products. But here's where his challenge comes in. What he says to sell the products that he needs to say to his patients that will buy it. They may get results with the products, but if they become a distributor, guess what? They think they got to know what he knows to sell the product. Because that's the premise that they bought it on. Do you understand that? And so they may even join, but they'll never replicate very fast, if at all. So when you get into details, and you become the product expert, and when you become the marketing plan expert, they will be impressed, and they will buy, and they will join. But it won't replicate, because they think they've got to know as much as you do, and be as smart as you are on it. And when they try, then they can't, and they try to do it the way that you do it, and they can't, because most people can't do it that way. Does that make any sense to you? Okay. So tell, you got to tell people first. Then you show them. So how am I going to show somebody about how this business works? List the names. List the names. They're going to put down the list of names. Their contacts, my presentation. How do I show them in a training class? I have to do that here. This, that's not my role. But if I was your sponsor, I would have you make the list of names. Okay? And then we would sit down and we would talk to them together. My country would use three-way calling. Now on most cell phones, you can use three-way calling anywhere in the world on, on iPhones and things like that. I would use that. I could use, meet me at the coffee shop, meet me here, meet me there. Fun, simple, magical, and I wouldn't make it involved. I don't want to have to go out on an all-night dinner, okay? Will that work? Of course it will work, okay? Nothing wrong with it. I don't want to spend that much time with a prospect. I only need to give them so much to get to the meeting. And then if they're interested and they want to get going, I don't mind, this, I'll spend as much time as I need to them, but I don't need that much time. I know there's a different culture here, and there may be more of that that's necessary than, than not, okay, based on the whole thing. You know, you might not be able to take a family member, and the culture environment may be different. I'm dealing with you in concept, you understand? I'm trying to share with you, don't do more than you have to, and don't think that you have to do everything. The, more, the less is more and when you're building your business, less is more. So my basic principle is your contacts, my presentation, do a three-way with them, meet them at the coffee shop, to get to what? One point. What's the point we're trying to arrive at? What is it? Bring them to the meeting. If I could show you a way to get to them to say yes to that, then show them the business, either right then or then show up to the business at a business meeting. I like doing it in a group form because I got more help, got more support. But if you don't have that, you do it on your own. What would I do on my own? I would take that five minute video where it talks about raw, the company, the products, okay? And it talks about, the, that's what I would be doing. I would be using that, and then I'd say, let's mix up the products. I'd mix up the products. I'll always demonstrate the product before I talk about opportunity. Always do it before opportunity, okay? I mean, I, I don't mind doing the meeting where you talk about this and this and this, but let's talk about the founder. Let's talk about, and if you don't have the video, you talk about what's on the video about raw. If you don't have the video, you talk about the company. You talk about the products in the highlights, not the whole thing. You pick out two or three things about Roth you want to talk about. You pick out two or three things about the company you want to talk about that comes out of that video. You talk about two or three things about the products that you want to come out of that. And if I was to show the video at the meeting, okay, after it was over, I would talk about my two or three things about Roth, as the video said about Roth, as the video said about the company, as the video said about the about the products. Okay, now let's show you how to make twenty five thousand, eighty thousand, and two hundred. You guys understand? I know I'm talking fast, but it's cons I try to deal with you in broad strokes. I try to deal with you in concepts so that you guys can dig in, okay? And and uh, and so tell, show. You tell, you tell them, okay? Then you show them. For me, using th the three, way, the the recruiting thing is three way. Then after I do about three or four with them, then we get on the phone three ways or we meet at the coffee shop. I do less 
than that I do normally do. And I let, in other words, the first two or three times, four times, it's almost all me. They get on the phone and say, listen, I want to introduce you to my friend Larry because, you know, Larry introduced me and I thought about you. He asked me this question. I thought about you and, and, and I want to know if you, he's going to share it with you. I do about, in the first three or four, I do almost all of it. Then when I get down here, I do about 60%, 40% of it, they do about 60%. Until I can get them doing 75 or 80% without me, then I'm out of here. Because tell, show, try, and when they do it, what am I going to do? Say, that was really good. That was really good. However, when you said this, think about saying it like this. Think about doing it like that. And let's see how we do on the next one. Just like you would your child. Right? This is how you do it. Now, I'll show you how I do it. Now, I want you to do it. Now, when they do it, what do you do? Really good. However, let's think about doing it this way. Am I right about that? Isn't that how we do it? Okay? That's what takes place. That's what takes place. Tell, show, try, do. It's going to get down to, they're going to want, a lot of them are going to want to keep you doing it. Okay? There's no muscle in that. They got to build the muscle. They got to build the muscle. They, if you can do it, they can do it. They're going to want you to keep doing it with them, and they're going to do everything they can to keep you to do it three ways, because they don't want to, they want to go to the gym, and they want the muscles, but they don't want to lift the weights. You lift them for me. Okay? You got that picture? You lift them for me. And I'll build the muscle. But I'll pay you. You'd lift them for me. Won't work. They got to develop the muscle. Sponsoring somebody is of no value unless they bring you somebody. And that person's of no value unless they bring you somebody. And when they get started, if they don't build muscle, they're no more than a placeholder. They're just a number. They're just a statistic. Okay? Now, obviously, we want them all to stay on the products. We want that to happen. We want them to get so involved that they never recruit anybody that they stay on the products. We want that. But that's they become no more than a glorified customer. They may show up as a team partner. They may show up as a manager. They may show up in your back office as an IMM. Okay? But if they're not doing this, they're no more than a placeholder. They're no more than a statistic. They're no more than a number. If they're not doing this all day long, they're no more than an auto. They're just an auto ship. For you. That's all that if the, you got an IMM that's not doing this stuff on a daily basis, don't get faked out. You got an auto ship member that happens to have an extra title. That's all it is. Okay? Yeah, but I got six IMMs and they're you know, and only two of them are working. No, you got two IMMs that are working and you got four people that are IMMs that are that are on auto ship. That's what you got. Okay? So what do you gotta do? Go get ten IMMs and you're gonna have two to take off. You understand? Okay? I can't make it any simpler than that. You say, well, it ought to be easier than that. There's nothing easier than this if you understand it. There's nothing easier because it's just numbers, and you just keep doing it over and over and over again. Tell, show, try, do. Now, they'll get it. You try it. They don't do it as well. You show them again. You tell them again. You show them again. They try it again until they get it down. And they don't have to be the best at it. Neither do you. You just got to do it. You understand? You don't have to be the best at it. If we all want to build a body, we go to the gym, and I don't care how many, if we're there the same amount of hours, and we're set, same, let's call it an hour, we're there the same hour every single day the same, we're lifting the same weights, we're not all going to get the same results. It's just not going to happen. Okay? We're all going to be a little bit different. And I want you to be careful of comparing yourself to other people. Be very, very careful. Because here's what's happened. And this is a tendency that's hard to do. Okay? But it, it'll creep up and it'll bother you. It'll hurt, it'll hurt your business. If you compare yourself to someone else, one of two things is going to happen. Number one, look at me. I'm a better recruiter than she is. Or I'm a better recruiter than he is. I'm a much better seller, retailer than they are. My organization is more unified than their, unified, their, their, their organization. We do, we're more consistent than they are. You compare, are my checks bigger than their check? You do those comparisons, and the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to beef you up like a peacock. Okay? <laughs> now, who likes being around smarter, richer, prettier? Remember that one? Nobody. Nobody. You start thinking, I'm real special. I'm going to tell you the only thing that makes you special is your DMO, 10 pennies. That's what makes you special. Okay? Now, the other thing is, is that you compare yourself, bigger check, 
I'm not as good as retailer. I don't recruit as well. I can't give a meeting like they do. I don't have that center of influence. And you diminish yourself to yourself. And it's the both of them are equal. You can't win when you compare yourself to anybody but you. You can't win. Because you're either going to be the peacock or you're going to be the little goose like this. You know, you're going to be the one of those two things. And so you can't win. You can't win. You got to compare yourself to you. And it doesn't matter what other people are doing. It matters what you're doing. It doesn't matter what others think. It matters what you think. It doesn't matter what others feel. It matters what you feel. And if you're doing your 10 pennies, if you're going to the gym doing this every day, I promise you, you're going to get there. You will get there. What if I would have quit at 47? What if I'd have quit at number 51? You know, what if I'd have quit at 52 and wouldn't have got 53? You got to just keep going. You just got to keep going until you get the job done. Okay, does that help anybody? Okay, just stay in there. And that 10 pennies thing, that center, that list of names is vital for you guys because if you don't get it off a list of names, you got to do it with pennies. If you're, if you're committed to five a day, you're going to do it with pennies or you're going to do it with a list of names or combination. Your call. Your call. And if someone doesn't give me a list of names, what can I do with them? I can't. I can tell them what needs to happen. I can't show, try, or do. And either they're going to do it or they're not going to do it. And there's going to be people that won't let you enter their center of influence. There'll be people that won't make a list of names. There'll be people that won't make a list of names in front of you, but they'll never set up. They may even set up a time to do three ways, but they won't do it. Okay? What do you do about that? Next. You just go to the next one. Okay? Another one. If you've got 10 people to give you a list of names, how many are actually going to follow up and let you work that center of influence? Conceptually, how many? Two. Two. That's the concept. And if you get 10 that let you work the list of names, you're finally going to have two that get it. You've got the deal. Okay? We can beat it all different ways, but that's what it comes down to. That's the idea. That's the concept. And you know you just keep doing it and do it. You've got to keep doing every aspect of it over and over and over and over again. That's all there is to it. Okay? Let me uh, talk about this, uh, the next promotion that's coming. Okay? Um, Roth is coming in February. Okay? Mr. Zor Roth. This is my phone. He's going to be here in February. Now, let me tell you what, how we work that. And let me tell you the value. What, when Roth comes, I've got to get this thing off of here. How's that work at all? No wonder. Uh, <laughs> it won't come off because it's on me. Okay, that's funny. Now, let me go through immigration with that on my fingers tonight. You almost didn't let me in the country as it was, you know. Okay, here we go. Roth is coming in February. Okay, now I'm going to show you this. This is an event when he comes. I'm going to call it a spectacular. When Roth Stork, the founder of your company, comes, that that's worked every aspect of what I'm telling you, he's lived that. So when he talks to you, it's the same that as he lives it, you know it, everybody's going to know that that's exactly, that he lives that life. That's the event. I believe it's going to be, don't hang me on these dates, I believe it's February 22nd. Okay? Now, here's what's going to take place with that event. I don't have to tell you, if you're in front of Ralph Zor, it's going to be pretty spectacular, right? It's going to help you. It's got to help you. Just like here today, it's got to help you. You may not agree with everything I say. That's not the point. You may not feel good about everything I say. That's not the point. But you have to agree that you're going to get value out of the dig the group tonight, today, in some manner that's going to help your business. And some more than others, okay? And some are going to get full value, some are going to get 80% value. But it's going to be better because you're here. Now, as we're going through the day, I can't help but think that you would be thinking to yourself, I wish so-and-so was here with me, right? One of your team members, I just wish they would be here. How many of you know what I'm talking about, right? I wish that they were here. We always wish that more people were here. We always <laughs> Most important thing that we're here, but we always wish that more people were there. Now, 
this at that. I'm going to really go as slow as I can here and try and communicate this. This is here. This is what we're working for. Now, here we are over here at the pre-event. <coughs> I'll just go ahead and write it for you. And we got the post-event. Now, most people in network marketing, that you'll hear this phrase, work from event to event. Do your business from event to event, is true. And the events will carry you. That's true also. But the value of this event is not this event. The value of this event is the pre-event activity. That's where the money is. That's where the growth is. For example, you had people that qualified to be in this room. There's some of you that qualified to be in this room. Last week. Okay? Last week. Some of you joined that's in this room. You know about this meeting since the World Congress. That's so September, October, you know, 60 days. You know about this. Some of you in this room got started a week ago and are in this room today. Okay? Here's the deal. That no matter what this is, that the event will always deliver. No matter what you had to do to say to your people to get here, you had to say, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Come on, come on, I'll help you. Let's go, let's go. They quit, you let them cry on your shoulder, you pump them up, you wash their car, you did everything you could, right? Okay, to get them to get to this event. Because you knew if they got to this event, it was going to help them and help you. Am I right? So you had no problems going to your team and saying, you go now, go team, go. Go team, go. Let's do it team, let's do it team. You had no problem because you were convinced that if they got here, no matter what you said to them, no matter what they had to go through, they were going to say thank you. Am I right? Okay. So the vet always delivers. You don't have to worry about the vet. What you need to do is worry about the pre-event activity. So Roth is coming here. You don't have to be concerned about the event. It's what you do between now and then that makes a difference. And that event, those qualifications now, are from now to the first of the year. Okay? And what are those qualifications? It's have a basic five. Have a basic five. And you decide you could accumulate your base. Some people didn't make it to the basic five, but they only had three. Well, now they got to get two more to come to see Roth. So we've given you a tool. We've given you a tool to go to your people to say if you only get two more, you can come to Roth. Now, they may have three and they may have quit a month ago, but you got a tool to go back to them, safety and number and law of average, and say to those that might have quit you even, or lost momentum, and say, let's do this now because of this over here. It's a tool to get more stuff going on. You understand? You can go to your new people that you sponsor tonight, and you can say, oh my goodness, your timing is so good because Roth Stork is coming in in, in, in in February, and we build you a basic five right now, then you're going to get to come to his training with personal mentoring by Roth Stork, the founder of the company, in February. you got to do it right now. Let's get you going. you got a reason. you got a tool to ask them to do something now and to do more now than they normally would. You understand that? That's all we need as distributors. We need something to sell. We need something to promote. We need events in front of us that will produce for us. And what we need to do is have something to sell and tell and call to action. We want to call to action for these people to do something in a shorter period of time, get started now quicker than they normally would, in a shorter period of time to do more than we thought they would do, and for this particular reason over here. Now, this event and Roth were pretty spectacular events. The event is irrelevant. <laughs> it's whatever you happen to use is what you use. We're going to keep spectacular events in front of you. For example, you guys keep asking about the grand opening. We're not ready for the grand opening. We're not even close to being ready for the grand opening. We're not even ready for pre-launch yet. Okay? We need more leadership. 
we got to have more. Maybe when Roth is here, we can talk about a pre-launch date to get us to a grand opening, but we're not ready yet. We don't have enough leadership. We don't, we've had people that have gone to the gym, but we don't have enough muscle being developed yet. We got to get more people below you because why would we want to shoot that? Why? It's like shooting a cannon at a rabbit, okay? If you shoot a cannon at a rabbit, you're going to get him, but there's no more rabbit. It's over. You need to shoot a nut, have just enough weaponry to get the job done. A grand opening is a big deal. Why use that on such little amount of, of leadership? Let's have a lot of leadership when we do that and grow your check and grow your business. Every event will grow your business if you use it right. Now, if someone, there's going to be two parts to that event. Basic five, get to come to the coaching and mentoring. If you have two out of the basic five that duplicate, you get to come to the uh, to the founder's dinner. The, the founder, the Roth will be having dinner that night, you'll get to come to that. If they have two, any two out of that five that duplicate. So you've got a reason for them to get in, okay? you got a reason for them now to get their basic five, and you got a reason for them to duplicate because they needed to come to the dinner. All we've done is supplied you with ammunition. All we've done is supply you with tools. All we've done is supply you with the things that get the job done. You have reasons, you have excuses, you have a reason why you're gonna do. This event is great. Let me tell you the worst thing that we could do. Have Roth door come and have it be an open meeting. All you have to do, you, you can be, let's say we get, you can be a guest and come. You say, oh, but look at all the people we get. So what? So what? We don't have any muscle being developed. We got people, we may even get a whole bunch of people to join, so what? We can say, if we have anybody could come to Roth, anybody, okay? We'd probably get a whole, we'd get a bunch of people here, wouldn't we? Big deal. What do we want? We want people building muscle between now and February 22nd. We don't want them to get here and say, oh, this is a good business, I'm gonna join. They still gotta go through 90 days, 90 days, 90 days. The faster we get them through those three 90-day segments, the better off we are. So why don't we get them through them fast, right now? Right now we get them through. You follow me? Okay, so let's say the Roth was coming and was open to everybody. We get a bunch of people. Now let's change it one degree. You got to be at least a team partner to come to see Roth. Now what does that do? We may get less people. I think we'd get the same people, but we would have more people. Would have whenever we got there has made some form of commitment. Am I right? They decided that they want to do this. There's some form of commitment. There's there's a difference there. You guys have to see this. They're going to be listening to Roth at a different level. They're going to be seeing me with a different set of eyes. They're going to be listening to them from a different image of themselves and the product and the opportunity. Now let's move it up a level, a degree. Now, they, they're not guests and they're not team partners. they got to be a manager before they get to see Roth. You got that one? Okay. Have less people. But now what did we get in the process? We given, if we made it a team partner, we gave you a tool to get more team partners. What do we need as distributors? Reasons, tools, to go, to ask, to do. If we make it a manager that they gotta come to see Roth, we've given you an additional tool to ask them to become a manager so they can get them to see Roth. Now they're coming with a totally different set of eyes than as a guest or as a team partner. You gotta see this, okay? Now, when we move it up a degree, and say you gotta have a basic five to come and see Raw. Which one makes you more money as a distributor? Having more people there as guests, or having more people there that have got a basic five built? Which one is more valuable to you? Okay, basic you've five. got tools that you didn't have before. Basic five. You got, there. those are for you. They're an excuse for you to get people to do what you need them to do now. If they got to go through these three 90-day segments, you need them to go through it faster, quicker, better. Okay? So because we've moved it up to basic five, okay, you've got everything you need between now and January 1st to get your existing team to get a basic five, get your new team to get a basic five. And the faster they get the basic five, then they need to be working on their team members to get their basic five, hence let's start the duplication in the process. 
What, don't you see what would ha happen to your business by doing it this way? I mean, this you got to see it, okay? That's what this is about. That's what this is about. So, basic five to come and be with Roth in a day like this. Well, I, if I say if that's what it's going to take, I'm going to get everybody I got that's a team partner, that's not a team partner, to become a team partner, and every team partner I got that's not a manager to become a manager, and every manager that I got, they go and get a basic five and get there. They got none or one or two or three or four, and I'm the new person I sponsor, I'm going to get them to get out there and get a basic five as fast as I can because the event is coming and the event will deliver no matter what you have to do. Does this make any sense to anybody? Okay. Now, most people put their emphasis on the event. Okay. That's going to deliver. The, the important thing is right here, what you do between now and January 1st, that's what the key is if you want to grow your business. That's when you walk out of here tonight and what you're doing tomorrow, what you're doing the next day, what you're doing next week, and what you're doing in December, that's the key of getting as many people as you can qualified to be here with you and with a basic fund. Now, when that happens, what happens to your check? Your volume grows, your check grows. When that happens and they, they achieve that goal, they're sitting in this room at a different level than as they came as a guest, a different level they came as a team partner. They're listening at a different level than they were at a manager. Now you've got something that you can take and build on. Make sense? Okay. Now, guess what's going to happen? What's the next thing is the post-event activity. This is what we do to this. We don't have to worry about that. That's a one-day deal. It'll take care of itself. Rock will deliver. You don't have to worry about it. But now, when he comes out of there, guess what he's going to do? Give you another event, another tool to keep doing the same thing with those people that just got there the first time and everybody in your group and for the new people you recruit, we're going to give you another event to qualify for, to go for, not so that get the training. The training is the least important part of this. Let me tell you, make it, make it, give them. You get your guys to do this for Roth. And the day of the event, okay, there's a major storm and all plans are canceled. All planes are canceled and Rob can't come. Can't come, okay? What does that mean? Okay, have you lost anything? No, you haven't. Now, you know he'd make it up. I'm trying to say if this didn't happen and you were able to do this, obviously, if this didn't happen because of something, you couldn't be a lie, it couldn't be in that. You want to understand my point. If that didn't happen, you still won because these people went to the gym more often. These people lifted more weights. These people advanced up. If this never happened, most people think this is what's going to do it. Whatever this does, it's it's 20 percent, 80 percent is over here. And if you guys get that, you're home free, man. This the event always will deliver enough. No matter who it is, no matter what it is, it always delivers enough. Now, you're going to feel stronger about certain events than you are others. The mistake is to work it any differently. <laughs> you know, you may feel stronger. I don't want to see Larry Thompson anymore. I want all the doctors to come. That may be what you want because you're building on the product. The mistake is to treat the events any different than one event to the next. They're all equal because they will all deliver whatever. The fact that you feel stronger about one over the other obviously means that you're going to work it harder. But as a professional, all events are equal. It wouldn't matter to me what that event was, okay? This is very powerful. Now, when Roth comes, this is gonna happen over here, so that's why we gotta go to work with. When Roth says here, here's the next event, that means we gotta do this with. Now, you gotta get this going immediately. Your team's gotta do this now. All of those things are designed for one thing, to get your business to grow to get the people through the 90-day sessions faster, quicker, faster, better. Simple, simple, magical. That's all it is. Okay? Questions here. Let's talk about this. What I showed you is money. I don't know what you understand, and I don't know what I communicated, but I do know this. That's a money. That's how you build your business. That's how it's done. Okay? Yeah, you know. This is so funny. <laughs> Don't get faked out in thinking the event's the key. It's not. It's what you do before that event and what you do after that event. That's what the key is. I don't care who's on the front. I don't care what, what takes place. 
Okay? Questions here on this? Let's talk. Anything. You guys are getting tired on me. I'm the one who should be tired, but you're getting tired. <laughs> and all due respect, it's harder to set out there than it is to be out here. <laughs> if I set out there, it's hard. Okay. Um, okay. Let me see what we got here. Rudy, I know I missed something. We talked about the, what's the name? We talked about the pre promotion. We're going to talk about the magic dust. And what else? And what else? So it's four things. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're going to be establishing more focus groups. Why? Because some of you are in that second 90 day period. Okay? And you guys are going to be working at a higher level. And what's going to happen is, is that Rudy's going to get a handle on a certain, you know, what's going on with you guys and where you are. He's going to communicate that to me. And then when that happens, then I'm going to say, okay, here's what we got to do next. Because I don't know A to Z. I always know what's next. Okay? I'm not smart enough to know A to Z. But I do know what the next couple steps is. I grew up in the San Joaquin Valley of California, and it's a valley, it's a big uh, agricultural valley. And in the wintertime, because of the temperature, you get a lot of fog. I don't know if you guys get fog out here at all, but real intense fog, okay? You could be driving along, the next thing you know, boop, you're right in it, and what happens? You can't see anything. You can go forever in fog, you know, by going slow enough, you can get there. Uh, if I'm walking somewhere and there's an intense fog, all I got to do, if I see how to take two steps, I'll take one. If I see two, I'll take one. That's how I work my business. If I see two, I take one. See two, take one. And so, um, you know, that's kind of what we're going to be doing here with these focus groups. We're going to get people through different sessions. So Rudy's going to give me a pulse beat on what's going on, and we'll establish different focus groups based on what's going on with that. And it doesn't matter if you're part of a focus group or not. It's about taking the people that are wherever they are and growing them. You could be in an upline or downline, or you could be in a sideline. It doesn't matter. It's just something we're doing. The whole group benefits from a few people being in a focus group. Okay? Why? Because we get to fix and refine. We get to go out there and fix and refine. It's like we get on a, a jet airplane and schedule to go to Dallas, Texas. What do they do? They dial in the navigational system, right? And we're expecting to get to Dallas, Texas, where I live, and have a safe, safe success, successful trip. And when the plane lands, okay, it's, we get off the plane, everything's safe and sound. Get off the plane, and we're in Seattle, Washington. You know why? A few degrees off in the calculation. No problem, safe, successful trip. We did not crash, we did not burn, Everything is fine. We're just not exactly where we thought we would be when we wanted to be there. So we fix and refine. Dial it in again. Now we get off the plane and we're in Miami Beach. <laughs> okay? A little closer, but we're not exactly where we thought we would be. And you fix and refine the dials. You get closer and closer and closer until you get to Dallas, Texas. What we do with the focus groups is fix and refine the presentations. We fix and refine the training. We fix and refine the pitches. And what did we get out of this focus group? Guess what we're immediately doing? Taking it back to everybody. What we got out of the focus group wasn't a secret for a few people. It was a place to start. Now, I started four focus groups. We started the one in Oman. Okay? At the same time, we started one in Russia, and we started one in Spain, and we started one in Italy. For those who were at the World Congress, the Spain people were out of control. They were absolutely ole, ole, ole everywhere we went. You know what I mean? They were out there and they were crazy. They really got the most momentum. And they were doing the best. And then Italy was behind that, and then you guys were third, and Russia was fourth. Guess who's got the most momentum now? You guys. You guys are on top of that momentum curve. <laughs> you saw the focus group last night, just a handful of people. Now, we started with more, okay? but they self-eliminate, okay? They're not bad people if they don't keep up. There's nothing wrong with them. It's just that, it just that the shoe didn't fit. We started, how many did we start with? I've had a feeling about 12 or something like that. How many was it? Two of them. How many? Two of them. 
20? 12, 12 people. 1, 2, 12. 1, 2. Okay. And I saw, I think you're not sorry, I can't hear up here. It was about, how, give me favors. 10, 12, 14. Hey, I got it. Yeah. In America, we can count 10, 2, 2, 14. Okay. Quick. Okay. We started with 14, and last night we had on the stage four, right? We had four. The others came along at great pace. Okay, but they didn't qualify for the for the team last night. So the dinner last night, it was only yesterday she can she qualified for. It. You understand? So we took that fourteen people. We narrowed it down to four last night. But who got the benefit of all that? All of you. So there's no the magic is not being on a focus group. The magic is the focus groups are going on. You you, you got that picture? So I need to be on a focus group. Get busy. You don't need to, but you got to You got it. Just go. Okay. We'll find it. We'll figure out who needs to go. Now, when the next time that I come back, we always teach conceptually the same material, but we're going to be teaching it at a higher level. Okay. A much higher level. We'll be teaching it and working on with the current circumstances that are going on in your country and in your organization. So we're going to continue to do that. And so that's going to be outstanding. And so I want you to know that. We got so much to tell you, so much to work with you on, we can only work with you at the level that you're at. You understand that? Yeah. You can only be one. For example, I thought there was a class up here earlier. Oh, there is, okay? If I was to go and try, this is a full bottle of water. You think that I can, yeah, I can pour this bottle of water completely into that glass? What's the answer? No. You can't. It's going to fill up. Why? The capacity is not there. There's not enough capacity to pour this into that. No matter what I got, you don't have the capacity to take it yet. Okay? It would be it'd be like pouring it in that bottle. You can only pour so much in in that glass. It's 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 frugal after that to do that. You guys got to raise your level of attitude. You got to raise your level of skills of and the skills that you need are going to be seriousness, excitement, passion, commitment, discipline, consistency. Those are the things that you've got to have. That's what's got to take place. And it's always at different levels. No matter what level you break up to in the marketing plan, you always are going to be at a different level personally. Um, there's a concept that I'll share with you very quickly here, and I, I don't know if I can get it across because the one I use is American Sport. Uh, there's everybody comes in as a like a manager, so let's say manager. Now all managers aren't equal in their activity, right? In their attitude and their seriousness and their excitement. They're not equal. So you got an A team player, you got a double A player, and you got a triple A player. Meaning the bottom level is A, but if they're better attitude, better commitment, better seriousness, they're double A manager. And then you got triple A manager, all right? And triple A manager is your best manager, the best attitude, the best consistency, the best discipline, all of those things, okay? That's the best. So you have different levels of managers. As you break up, guess what? You have different levels of IMS, A team, a, 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 I am on, double A and triple A. All different levels of attitude, commitment, desire, teachability, willingness to work. There's different levels. All ranks are not equal, okay? Because you have their difference in an in, in individual. Now you rank up the vice president. Guess what? In the vice president ranks, A team, double A, triple A. Now you brace up the president's team, A team, double A, triple A. You think that all president's team are the same. They're not. There's 18 president's team members, B and double A and triple A, okay? And the triple A's are the ones that's got the best excitement, the best seriousness, the best commitment, the best passion, the best willingness to work, the best teachability, the best in everything. They're the best that we got in those ranks. As you rank up, you're either gonna be an 18 player, double A or triple A team player. That's what's gonna happen. And you say, well, well, well that's not fair. Well, it's life. <laughs> That's the way it works. I didn't design this thing. You know, I mean, I just participate in this deal called life. I didn't put it together. No one asked me when it was crazy would be mad. I didn't get there. I didn't get to get in on those decisions. I just get to be here and partake. Okay? And so 
as you're working with your people, you've got to understand the A team, double A, triple A deal and not get faked out by title and rank. You're not. You, everybody's different. And you think when they rank up that they're more serious. They go to IMM and you get faked out because you think, oh, no, they're really going to commit. And then you don't understand that you've got to get 10 to get two. You've got to get 10 IMMs to get two to become triple A. Okay? And you got to get, and out of that, you're going to get some with the double A's, and most of them are end up as a single A uh, IMMs. That's what's going to happen. And you've got to get the vice president. Guess what? You've got to get 10 to get two triple A uh, vice president team ranks. You're going to have more of the of the double one A, and 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 the, the majority of it's going to be double. A. You guys got that? You got to remember those things. What I'm sharing with you, you don't hear it in the multi-level world. Okay? You don't hear it. This is the stuff that builds the giants. This is the stuff that builds an herbal like the $5.3 billion last year. From the trunk of our cars we started. This is what built the Amways of the world to $9 billion last year. This is what built the Mary Kays to $5 billion last year. That's what builds these companies. Okay? These kind of fundamentals, these concepts, these principles that all came, with the exception of herbal life, came out of generation one. We came out of Generation 2 at the end of it, but because I was in Generation 1, I brought those four values to Herbalife, and we were able to build those things. That's what we have here. That's what we're involved with. That's what we're, we're dealing with here. And so you guys have got some things that nobody else has got in the multi-level world. <clears throat> Talk about it, okay? Certainly, we got to start with products. we got to start there. You're not going to be in business for 20 years doing what... Uh, PM is doing without having products like this, okay? You can build with these products. You can build. They are solutions. If the person doesn't have energy, they can get it. If they can't sleep, they can get it, okay? They can get these things out of these products. There's no problem with them. The simpler you keep it, the better it is. They can get these solution with these products. These products are patented. They are patented. That's not an easy thing to do, okay? These products does have MTC in it. The only, you can, on the label, nutrition transport complex, uh, it, that concept, it's right there on the products, okay? And so because it's there, that's what makes these products effective. You realize without NTC, they could, if someone was to duplicate our products without NTC, they're not going to work the same. They can't work the same because it can't penetrate the cell and oxygenate the cell the way it does in the doctor go wrong tomorrow, okay? And so the products are different. The products are a foundation you can build with. We know the compensation model is a compensation model that we can go with, one that's fair. How many companies in multi-level offer 110% guarantee back to their customers? It doesn't happen. Open, I'm open, doesn't matter. That, you know what, that's a company that believes in a product. There's a company that stands behind you as a distributor, 110% guarantee, okay? No matter what. How many companies will let the distributors return their products the way that they do here? You don't want to be part of us. They don't want. They, Ross says you don't want to be part of us. Okay, we don't want you part of. We, you don't want to be with us. We don't want you with us. No hard feelings. Bring us back. We'll give you the money. No big deal. Now, what kind of other company? That's a company you can stand behind. What you can stand behind a company that is, will stand behind you, knowing that for 20 years, every time they produced the checks and produced them accurately and produced them on time. Okay, no questions asked. You can stand with a company that does that. You got, they're standing with you, you stand with them. You can stand with a company that will give you these basic fundamental things of truth and reality that we've shared with you here today that Roth will continue to share with you. We can give those to you, okay? You got a reason to want to build your PM business. The reality is it's how you feel about these things. It's how you feel about the company, okay? That's the variable. Your variable in success is not going to be the products. It's not going to be the compensation plan. It's not going to be these events. It's not going to be those things. Because we all have the same things. We all have the same things. You know the product doesn't have to work for everybody. It only has to work for one. And if they get one person energy and they get one person sleep, that means the products really do work. I got news for you. The compensation model doesn't have to work for everybody. It only has to work for one. If it works for one, it says it'll work for everybody. The variable is not the products. The variable is not the compensation plan. The variable is not the company. The variable is you. 
and how you feel about those problems, how you feel about the company, how you feel about the compensation plan, but more importantly, how you feel about you and your own personal financial future. How strong you feel about that of being teachable and willingness to work, okay, and having desire. That's the barrel. How you feel about you is going to make the difference of your success, not the products, not the company, not the marketing plan, not those things, as important as they are, okay, that's not the barrel. you got to have those. You're going to have those if you're going to build for 20 more years. But that's not the difference. The difference is you, 100% you, and how you feel about it and what you do about it. And that's what I try to say. I try to center on one thing, the mirror. Take a look at the mirror every single day. What does the mirror look like? Self, what do we start with? Self-responsibility. We started with self-determination. We started with self-motivation and self-functioning. That's what we started with, okay? And guess what? That's what we end with. Because that's the only thing that matters. Nothing else matters. I am so excited about this part of the world. You guys want to go to the Philippines. You guys want to go to India. You want to go to all these different places. We're not ready. We're not ready. What good would us to do to open up India tomorrow or Philippines tomorrow? What good? We don't have the leadership. Why would we jump in there, recruit people, and not support them? Why would we do that? Why would we take the company's eyes off of what they're doing here to build here and have them go over there and start there? What? It's a fresher piece of pie? What's the point of that? That's not what PM's about. We're here. We're, it's at least two years before we can think about the Philippines. It's at least two years before, at least two years before we can think about India. Then we can start the process of licensing and open up. What good would it do us to start today? We would trade these dollars for those dollars with weaken this leadership to have weak leadership over there. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay? When you can sometimes you gotta go slow to go fast. We gotta build up leadership. We gotta have at least, at least six Champions League members here, here in this part of the world. <laughs> to 100 presence team members. You understand that? And now, working with you guys the way we're working with you, we're not talking about rank. We're talking about skills. You understand? We're talking about skills of taking over and over. You're not going to hear any different from me. In the next, you know, I've been doing this for 45 plus years. In the next 45 years, you're not going to hear any different from me. Okay? You may hear it in a different way because because I tell it in a different way because I'm growing and learning myself. You may hear it a different way because you're growing and learning, but it's not going to be different. Listen to those millionaire training tapes, okay? All you got to do is go sign up. You can get it free because you're in the downline of the, the group, the guys that made it. You can go get it for 60 days. You're going to hear the same stuff 32 years ago when that was, time, was taped, okay? Different way, different thing, but it's the same thing. You can get it and go over and over again. You guys can get this and you can make it happen. There's only a few things that you ever do to make your organization grow. And anything you get outside of that slows it down. This is about duplicating. Where it doesn't require special skills of leadership, doesn't require special, I'm talking about the people you recruit. They don't have to know much of anything. They can be a homemaker, they can be a, a construction worker like me, they can be a businessman, they can be an accountant, they can be whatever. And they can start where they are and go wherever they want to go because of the simple, fun concept. And as they start doing it, they start realizing that they have more teachability than they thought. They have more desire than they thought. They have more uh, willingness to work than they thought. And they just grow into it. I didn't get here by myself. It was uh, uh, overnight. It was, I grew into it. Roth didn't get there. He grew into it. Okay? And it doesn't matter if three 90-day sessions that to get you there, or, 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 or six 90-day sessions, or if it's nine 90-day sessions. It doesn't matter. You just keep doing it over and over and over again. I wish that you guys could see you the way that I see you. I wish you could see in you what I see in you. I wish that you could see in, in your country here, in this area, part of the world, what I see. I wish that you could see what you could become and what this part of the world can end. I wish you could see it. I know what it looks like.